my great pleasure now to introduce Dr. Arthi Gupta. Um, Arthi has been traveling, so I'm really particularly thankful that she has actually taken time out during her travels to actually join us. Um, Arthi belongs to the promoter family of Jagan Group, Jagran Group, uh, which has interest spread across India, uh, in, sorry, across media, hosiery, and real estate. So the three very distinctly different areas where um, the group's interests are. She has a family office with investments in listed and unlisted space and is an active investor in early stage startups. With a doctorate in economics from IIT Kanpur, Arti has a keen interest on policy, especially those that promote women entrepreneurship. It's all yours, Arti. Thank you, thank you, Pushpa. Namaste, everyone. His Excellency, yes. Indian High Commissioner to New Zealand, members of INZB, well, and Wellington Chamber of Commerce, and everyone joining today. Thank you for inviting me to participate in this intriguing, intriguing conversation. An absolute mm -hmm. pleasure to present things from India's point of view. And Pushpa, I would like to take the leave of two minutes more, as I'm representing <laughs> 1.38 billion people. Uh, can I request Gary to please uh, share my video? Yeah, one minute, please. Yeah. Yeah. Since you've said it so nicely. <laughs> <laughs> so today I will be talking about the challenges and changing changes happening with respect to women in business in India and finally discuss the way forward for possible synergies between the two countries. India has about 432 million working age women and 13.5 to 15.7 million women owned businesses that provide direct employment to about 27 million people. In India, 20.37% of MSME, which stands for micro, small, and medium enterprises industries, are women-owned. And this percentage has grown in the last uh, 10 years. But is this growth enough? And if not, what are the reasons for this slow growth? In my opinion, the prime reasons for this slow growth, and some of this have already been, been mentioned by His Excellency, are unconscious biases, challenges in accessing finance, building our own network, you know, lack of safety in public places, and sometimes not getting enough support from family. You know, India is emerging as the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. And there are a number of new age businesses that have women at its helm. The country has about 61,000 startups and 15% of them are women founded. The country saw the largest number of unicorns last year and 10% of them were women founded. You might feel that these numbers look grim, but in reality, they're far better than what they were a couple of years back. Today, the ecosystem is conscious and has a number of investors and funds that are constantly promoting women entrepreneurship. For example, as an angel investor, more than half my portfolio is of companies that are women founded, and out of the 50% remaining, 25% are women centric. I actively work as the national startup head for Fiki Flow. Flow is the women's wing of the Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. An All India Forum for Women, Flow represents 8,000 women entrepreneurs and professionals that have been promoting entrepreneurship and professional excellence amongst women through workshops, seminars, conferences, training, and capacity building program. As a national head for Flow Startup Cell, we are trying to build an ecosystem of women founders and funders you know, while we all agree the need to promote women entrepreneurship, I think there needs to be a constant push to have women on the other side of the table as well as investors. And this is what we have been helping create. And I, if anybody in the audience would like to collaborate or work with us, I would be more than happy to take this discussion forward. We also run mentorship acceleration programs uh, for which we can explore, you know, synergies between both the countries. You know, I often get asked this question, why the need to talk about women in business? Is it just the diversity angle or is there something more? And here I would like to present some stats. According to Boston Consultancy Group, startups founded or co-founded by women generate 10% more cumulative revenue over a five-year period. These startups have a more inclusive work culture and employ about 3x more women than men. Personally, I feel that businesses that have women at its helm 
generate higher returns and at lower valuation. And the stats are say that for every dollar invested, women-led startups provide 78 cents return compared to 31 cents by men-led startups. And that is why I choose to invest into women, not because it is the right thing to do, but also the smart thing to do. And I would suggest so should you. I would like to next talk about, you know, women have a dynamic ability to adapt. And we all know that adaptability is a much required trait in an entrepreneur's journey because the journey itself is a roller coaster, right? A survey conducted by Bain and Company, Google and Or Foundation of 350 women solopreneurs and small company owners in urban India found that women-run founders were resilient and fast to adapt. We saw this being put to test when we got hit by the most severe pandemic in the last century, right? In the last two years. Although the immediate impact of the lockdown on the Indian startup ecosystem was severe, it was amazing to witness how quickly women founders adapted to reimagine their businesses. What has been most impressive is how many startups have reduced burn and improved unit economics very rapidly. In fact, we saw India's first women-led led profitable unicorn startup go public in the pandemic. Another positive impact of COVID has been that a more digital working landscape has removed some of the traditional obstacles to women's careers. Flexible working hours, including the ability to set their own hours, removal of pressure to commute, and the technology to connect and participate fully from a remote location has been long on the list of actions needed to promote female career progression. And I think we've got that right during COVID. You know, the, there are a number of schemes that the Indian government has been extremely proactive about, especially to support startups in India and women entrepreneurs. Some of them were mentioned by His Excellency, uh, Indian Commissioner to New Zealand, and uh, they provide cheap credit and other financial options. I would next like to talk about how New Zealand and India can have built a strong relationship together. You know, it is encouraging to see dialogues like these happening where one can explore deeper collaborations between both the countries. Personally, for me, women in business, I think India provides better access for New Zealand businesses to India's vast market and more opportunities to export raw materials and intermediate products needed by Indian manufacturers. With the startup ecosystem thriving in India, we are seeing innovative and disruptive tech in the country solving real issues. And I would like to invite women entrepreneurs and investors from New Zealand, especially in the field of startups, to collaborate with us and let us explore how we can mutually benefit from our synergies. I would like to end my presentation with this quote by Sheryl Sandberg. You will be defined not just by what you achieve, but by how you survive. Women in business from both countries need to realize that we are the first generation that actually might succeed in ending this gender disparity existing in our countries. And there's something very exciting about that, no matter how challenging it may be. Even when faced with unconscious bias, I think it's vital to remember that the process is a learning curve and hopefully those that come after us won't succeed if we simply give in. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Arthi. Um, I'll send you the bill for going over time for charity. Um, I have added two extra minutes for you, by the way. So um, for being being 1.2 billion <laughs> population. Thank, thank you, you thank very you. much. Thank you very much. There's some really very interesting and exciting stats and really exciting times ahead. And I'm, I'm really glad to hear that you are also very keen to collaborate with New Zealand women, especially in the start, startups and that. Um, Teresa, you will be very keen to keep an eye on that one. So it will be really very, very good to, um, to stay connected, Arthi. And some people have asked for your slides, so we will make your slides available. It's, by the way, those who joined us later, the whole uh, session is being recorded, so you will have access to that recording once, um, once it is all arranged. Um, and now my pleasure to invite 
uh, Rachel Magukian to actually talk. Um, Rachel is currently a member of the India, Middle East and Africa Regional Lead Team at New Zealand Trade and Enterprise. So she's another one from um, New Zealand um, Trade and Enterprise, but with a different focus. Um, She's currently providing connectivity between NZT teams and the region and New Zealand. Being the New Zealand anchor for regional team, she's regarded as the IMEA go-to person and IMEA stands for, uh, as I've said earlier, India, Middle East, Africa. Before NZT, Rachel worked in the private sector in leadership roles leading teams of clinical specialists in the health technology sector and production environment. It's all yours, Rachel. Uh, kia ora. Thank you, Pushpati. Um, it's, it's an absolute honour to be here. I actually feel quite humbled being uh, amongst such a, um, a fabulous group of panellists. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to, to speak. And look, I'm going to take um, my um, worldview from a slightly different angle and I'm going to share a little bit more about what that looks and feels like from uh, within NZTE and the journey that we have taken um, over the number of years that I've been fortunate to work for this organisation. And Gary, I'll ask if you could be so kind as to bring up the presentation yep. for me and, and just move yep. through that. That would be fabulous. Mm. I'm also very cognizant of making sure that I stick to time because um, uh, having a little bit of Scottish blood in me, I'm very loath to part with my cash. So um, I'll do my utmost to, uh, to stick to time. So yeah, as mentioned, I'm really pivoting a little bit towards what does this look like in terms of the work that we do at NZTE and the way that we um, engage with the world and across our global network. And I think the message that I want you to take away, and I'll ask, next slide, please, Gary. Um, the, the message that I want you to take away from um, my time with you is that uh, our organization has been very intentional over the last 10 years under the leadership of our current CEO, um, Peter Crisp. It's been very intentional about making sure that people, people are at the front and center of what we do. And um, you know, our purpose is to, to grow companies internationally. We're here to help them grow bigger, better, faster, for the good of New Zealand. You know, we think that it, our role is really pivotal in ensuring that um, New Zealand is positioned well to provide um, you know, a, a safe and an inclusive haven for all that live within um, our shores. And we pride ourselves at NZTE for uh, our catchphrases that, you know, we work for a cause, not an institution. And I would have to say that in the 15 years that I've been with the business, I've seen lots of change, but I've seen that that spirit has just grown and grown and grown in terms of the way that the, the people within the business feel about who we are and what we're here to do. Next slide, please, Gary. In terms of our strategy, I'm not going to go into this slide in too much detail, but um, because I really want to focus on the slide that follows, because that talks about our diversity and inclusion um, journey and where we've landed to date. But this really is just a, a one page summary of, of the key components of who we are and what we're about. Our customer experience is right at the center of who we, uh, who we are and what we do. We're driven by some really core tenants and some core values of ambition, adventure, honesty, trust, and manaki. Um, Kaitianga is very important as part of that, as is our, our focus um, around Matu and our, our role as a treaty partner and the way that we ensure that all parts of our economy are able to grow um, and accelerate and be the best that they can. In terms of what we aim to do. It's really about scaling our ability to deliver value and customer impact in the best possible way that we can. If I can just jump to the next slide, please, Gary. The one before, thank you. Thank you. Um, so in terms of, uh, I think the story that I really want to share with you and who we are in terms of our diversity and inclusion journey and where, we, where we're heading and, and um, you know, Anne is a very important part of that in her role, help and focusing externally with uh, women in export. 
internally we've also been on a journey and where we're landing today is that um, we really focus on imagining where we've got a gender um, equality across the world free of bias stereotypes and discrimination a world that is diverse and equitable and inclusive um, where our differences are valued and they're even celebrated and where women can forge equality but I actually use the term um, broader than women I think that the uh, emphasis that we draw on, especially in, in more recent times, is you know the combination of gender, cultural, and identity diversity. It's really important that we ensure that all parts of our, our NZT team feel that um, they are they're shared, they're safe, they're valued, they're welcomed, and they're heard. That's one of our really key visions for everyone that they feel safe within the NZT Farnow. And that is enabled through uh, a number of different initiatives within the organization. And I'll touch on that in just in a, a minute, but we also enable that through measuring it because you know it's very true that if you don't um, create some data points and you don't um, measure your journey, it's, it's hard to be able to tell a story of where you started and where you're going and how you're actually traveling. So, you know, KPIs are an important part of what we do in terms of measuring that, that journey. And we measure KPIs through our employee engagement and ensuring that our employees feel fully engaged in uh, their contribution to the business. We also um, have KPIs around our gender diversity. So we have a 40, 40, 20 target that we aim for across all parts of our business. And that's um, our uh, various different uh, teams within the organization and our leadership teams, but also into our international network and our, our network of advisors and our beaches advisors. We're very delighted to have a new um, chairperson for our board. And it's uh, our the first female chairperson that we have, and that is um, Jennifer Kerr, and she just um, joined us very recently in the last week or so. And if you look at our board composition, we actually are sitting at a 50-50 a split and balance across our board. So I think we're actually really living to the values that uh, we uh, are asking other businesses to look to as well. Um, we're very committed to our treaty partnership and that's uh, through the support that we provide through our investment teams, through our export teams, and also through the capability that we um, enable within our people and we're a global business so we bring that through programs like Kia Kaha for all of our new employees to help them to understand the the richness and the importance of um, the culture but also the treaty and the, the commitment that we have to deliver to the treaty. We have communities within our business that are all around celebrating diversity and inclusion and post regularly within our intranet networks. We have programs like Safe to Speak Up, which is you know, creating an environment where people can really feel that they can contribute in a safe and transparent way. And then, of course, you know, we have the launching of our Women in Export program, which, which Anna leads. Um, we're very, very committed to being able to uh, create that environment that enables anyone, everyone within our business to contribute. And we want to be seen to be um, a benchmark business, uh, not just within the public sector, but also in the private sector. Next slide, please, Gary. And so, you know, to your do time that. Is, your time is up, Rachel. So if you can wrap it, please. Absolutely. This is my Thank last you. slide. And I just want to pull on that, um, that bubble on the lower left-hand side around people. You know, mm. our goal is to put ourselves within the, 10, the top 10% 10 of all workplaces within New Zealand. Last slide, Gary. And uh, so really, this, there, there are lots of online resources we have in this space, but please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions on our journey. Thank you very much, Rachel. I have a bad news for you. You will still have to part with some money, I'm afraid, despite all your efforts. <laughs> I'll, have, I'll live with it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rachel. I think, I think we have some really rich uh, information here in, in front of us. Um, and I would like to spend about 10, 15 minutes on, on some questions in that. And I'm going to start with one thing, <clears throat> and that is literally 
30 second answer I, I'm looking for from all of you. One is now that you have heard what is happening in different parts uh, of not only of uh, New Zealand, but different parts of the world and what different organizations are doing and how women are leading in the business sector. If there is one thing that you would like to take away from here, which you are going to consider within your own organization, what will that be? And I literally mean 30 seconds answer, please, from each one of you. Who wants to go first? I'm happy to start. Yeah, yeah. that's the silence. <laughs> Good coming. You know, I'll always go. Um, yeah. I think, you know, so many insights. And I think, you know, um, the, actually last week we um, we had the death of one of New Zealand, uh, one of the global women, um, amazing leaders. And I think it's really um, be the change that you wish to see and support other women in collaboration. And all of the speakers talked about happy to share their learnings, happy to share their insights, happy to collaborate um, every single speaker. And I think that's the lesson that together we can do more. Um, and, you know, events like this and actually that power of collaboration and just seeing it even in the chat so that's my key takeout thank you thank you very much joe you want to go next i'm going to call out according to my screen i i agree with carmen it's just about collaboration and making sure that we network really well together as as um new zealand um, females um, that want to do more work in india and to really to really uh, group together and see how we can actually collectively really gain some traction in India. I think it's a great, great country and a lot of potential. Um, I don't think we're doing enough um, as a as a as a country. So I think you know, as part of the NZ um, uh, India New Zealand Business Council as well, um, really get involved in actually spreading the word about how great New Zealand businesses are and doing work in India. Thank you, Arti. Yeah, uh, uh, I think we, we, what I feel is we're pretty much all doing very, very similar things, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Like helping women rise in business. And uh, I think I would like to keep having such dialogues and learn from best practices from around the world. I think women do not put, put that much emphasis or weightage on networking, which I think is of utmost importance. So that would be my key takeaway, like, you know, do more of such uh, collaborative dialogues. Thank you. Teresa. Yes, I think we're all on the same track. We all have the same issues. We all have the, uh, we're all in a direction of uh, finding um, solutions at different levels um, according to our networks. And the key is collaboration. But I think also the key is, is that we should have these conversations amongst ourselves uh, as women, as as um, you know, connect this to to our children, to our grandchildren, uh, that we have those resources within ourselves, and that we could work together to make that happen. Kia ora. Thank you very much, Kia ora, Teresa. Anna. I really liked Artie's point in her presentation around how we need to focus on founders and focus on funders. And I think that's something that's come through a lot. And I love the work that Teresa is doing here in Aotearoa. Um, but there's this, this quote um, from the UK of we're over being underfunded. And I think that's the thing is like, how do we work together to, to change that? So that's my takeaway. Thank you very much. And lucky last, Rachel. Well, look, I think the key thing is collaboration and through collaboration, we will create a slipstream through which others will follow, whether it's other women, other minorities, whatever. Um, I think that's the important thing. Your Excellency. You've been listening so, uh, quietly, sitting through, so you can add your weight to it. Thank you. I thought we have a side role today. <laughs> 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 but side role is very, very important, Your Excellency. You know, I, I benefited from, uh, you know, um, the, the, the learnings which were shared on this platform. Uh, one uh, point which emerged from uh, Dr. Arthi's uh, presentation, and I think it's very relevant for India, the sense of, uh, you know, uh, public safety and security in workplace, that's something where uh, we have to work as a government and I take that point from being here in New Zealand. Oh, good. 
Thank you very much. Um, now it's time for any questions from the audience. Um, Sophie has been keeping an eye on questions. Sophie, do you have any particular questions? And while Sophie is sorting out the questions, I have a request from all of you, those who have um, taken part in the panel discussions, but also those who are attending, what would you like INZBC, Indian High Commission, and the Wellington Chamber of Commerce, this, this triangle partnership that we have, what more would you like us to do that will be helpful for you as, as women in business or women interested in doing business? Uh, if you can use your chat uh, function and just write it for us, we will be more than happy to, to look into, into that. I am particularly very keen and committed to actually see what more can be done and some very interesting suggestions have come through. Um, collaborate, more conversation, own up to who you are uh, is one of the things I take away. You need to take pride in who you are uh, before you do anything else. Um, Sophie, do you have anything uh, in question thing that we need to ask the panel members? Yes, absolutely. And hi, everyone. I apologize for my camera being off. Um, it's actually uh, by the way, little... before she says, Sophie is off the camera, not because she's in her pajamas, it's because her, <laughs> her camera on her computer is not working. So please don't misunderstand her. Sophie. Yes, I apologize for that. Now, one of the questions that did come through was mm -hmm. on the focus of, you know, the space of girls all the way from school and in their education phase and what maybe we could do or, you know, the community in both countries could do moving forward to empower girls and women, or I guess, from an earlier age um, going forward to, I suppose, really mm -hmm. succeed in these um, in these environments. Okay. Okay. Uh, does anybody want to comment on that? Well, I can push for. Mm. Um, at Māori Women's Development, we found it very important to future mm. um, And so for quite some years now, at least more than a decade, actually, we've been focusing on developing programs um, into, uh, at varying levels. We call it a taumata of uh, stepping stones. It's we we um, introduce them to entrepreneurship, and ultimately through various programs, we actually are now at the stage of funding our youth. Some of them just out of school, um, some of them in university, and some have left university. And we're now funding them to start their businesses because university, sadly, isn't for mm -hmm. anyone. And we're capturing the entrepreneur spirit that naturally lies within our our, our youth. Um, you know, they don't have the blinkers on, Anything's, anything goes, and, mm -hmm. and they're very creative. And so for us, we've started at school leaving age uh, because that's where we want to capture um, the potentiality of who they are and who they can be. But there's no reason why we shouldn't be starting a lot earlier uh, with, you know, uh, age-appropriate type activities to capture their minds as, as while they're young. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else wants to add to that? I, I think I, I can go, at least from an Indian point of view, you know, I feel that girls in India, they're, they're topping almost all educational exams, right? Whether it be mm. at school level or at a university level. But when it comes to workforce participation, India ranks amongst the lowest. Mm -hmm. And we, at least at Flow, have been trying to understand and solve for this how to ensure that education translates to financial independence. How do women continue to work after getting that degree? And while this has been a difficult uh, task, I think uh, encouraging them to have the right dialogue before getting married has been very, very helpful to, pro to ensure that their family provides their support uh, once they get married and continue working. So this at least has worked in India uh, in the, some of the areas where we've been working. Thank you, Arthi. Actually, that, is, that particular area is very close to my heart is the financial independence of women. Until we actually start to give them skill set and that, that passion to actually become financial independent, financially independent, we will continue to lag behind. And I think that needs to start at home where the parents start to see 
son and daughter both having equal potential to move forward. Um, it still is in big families, and that's why it was really interesting to see you leading your family business. It, it still is. If there is a son, he automatically takes a priority in terms of leading the business. It's changing, but the change is coming. Anybody else would like to add to that? It's okay. Sophie, we have a... Pushpaji yeah. Shafali here. I yes. just want to uh, ask, are we discussing about India or New Zealand? Both. Both. Okay. It is the India and New Zealand Business Council, and that's why okay. all of the presenters have focused on their experience in different areas. Some have worked in India and some are from India. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what we're looking at. And, and I think the key thing for us is to, to see how we can enhance, especially in New Zealand, from my point of view, how we can enhance ethnic women and Maori women, Pacific government actually moving forward um, into, the, into the business sector, especially in entrepreneurship uh, area. So yeah. thanks, Chef so, Aliji. Yeah, mm. so uh, my comment is that women empowerment, which is the topic, which is the current topic, and it's really helping everywhere in the world. And mm. lately I have seen that the women are coming up and also, if we are talking about the family and the parents, uh, they are encouraging their daughter and daughter-in-laws to work because everyone around mm. the world, they are aware that there is no clap mm. if there are no two hands together. Yeah. So uh, I think slowly and steadily, the world is changing and um, if we, we we shouldn't be criticizing anyone but uh, everyone is trying their best and i'm i'm sure in new zealand both mm. husband and wife are working and uh, the salary and remuneration and the post and everything has been given nicely so Yes, um, we have come a long way and we still have to cross a few mm. lines. Uh, there yeah. are some hurdles, mm. but uh, uh, if we just uh, move and uh, carry uh, on. Thanks. Actually, yeah. Yes. Thank, okay? Thanks. Yeah. 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 thanks, Chef so Aliji. Then, so just be positive, yes. Th thanks, Chef Aliji. Um, being, being constructive does not mean we are negative. Just, just one liner. It's, it's being honest with what is working and what is not working. That's what this is discussion is about. What is working? There are some very good practice examples that we have heard today, and that's what we will we are working towards. Um, any other question anybody's got? A last request before I hand it over to Carmen. Ronnie, we can't hear you. You're, you're oh. not coming through. Ronnie's trying to say something. Um, please use your chat um, section, please. Um, Teresa, there's a question here for you. Um, I'm interested in niche marketing for East Coast wellness products. Who on this panel would like to hear from me? I'm assuming after the after the um, discussions. If anybody is interested, and I think um, Teresa is quite a lot in your area, but anybody else is interested in, please let us know that Georgie um, is asking that question. She is from East Coast and I know her personally, so I can always connect you um, with her if you are interested in. Um, I would, um, Georgie, there's an address there for Teresa. You can contact her. Um, I, any last minute question from anyone or last minute comment any panel member wants to make before I hand it over to Carmen? Um, I am trying to retain my reputation <laughs> for finishing on time. And I think we are on track. No comment, no questions. Sophie, you're trying to say something? I can see. 
Oh, oh no, sorry. I was um, just putting myself on mute for Carmen to go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, there, is a, there is a question here. If we need more ethnic representation on boards, then we need transparency and training to get on board. And yes, there is. Again, Rani, please do get in touch with me afterwards. There are some schemes here. We will encourage um, Ministry of Women's Affairs, Ministry of Ethnic Affairs, um, and there are some other organizations that are actually trying to encourage and, and you need to be proactive. One thing I am reading through the all the comments that are coming through and listening to all of you, that this is just a start of many conversations we actually need to have. And, and maybe, as they say, God willing, we will have face-to-face -face <laughs> few hour conversation where we can actually network and try and support each other. Um, with that note, I am now going to hand over to uh, Carmen. Um, Carmen is the founder and CEO of Velocity and an INZBC board member. Um, Car Carmen has always been, she's always inspired me every time I heard her. She's so full of energy and life and, you know, the world is her oyster. Uh, she's an entrepreneurial powerhouse with over 20 years of experience developing valuation strategy in banking and using technology and data to create value. In record time, she has created two global industry leading businesses, Velocity and Data Insight that do just that. I would now like to invite Carmen to actually conclude the session with her closing remarks. Thank you so much, Pushpa, and fabulous job keeping us all on time. Um, we love your work, um, especially coordinating so many speakers. Um, what a phenomenal event, and I think um, we're all aligned that it just feels like it's the, at the beginning. Um, and we celebrated International Women's Day only um, about 10 days ago, and I think we all just acknowledge we've come a long way, but we still have so far to go, and especially seeing some of those stats today that were shared. Um, and, you know, I think it is the power of collaboration, networking and sharing our lessons learned, but also actually putting ourselves out there um, because people will help. And I've been absolutely so, um, you know, and, and really astonished at the openness, particularly in the India community, um, from Niti Aayog to New Zealand Trade and Enterprise in India, as well as New Zealand. Um, and the network is there. So, um, you know, it is up to us to actually build that momentum um, and really realise those opportunities to work together. Um, especially for the ladies, I think, you know, we don't play golf. Um, many of us are not um, going for after drinks because we have children. And it's up to us to find the way to support each other and um, build those networks. And it may be WhatsApp groups or less formal face to face because we are busier for many of us. Um, and I think, Madam. Madeline Albright said there's a special place in hell for women who don't help other women. Um, and so, you know, we're all here to help. So make sure you reach out to your network. The power of a network is incredible. Um, so thank you, everybody, um, for your amazing sharing today and the authenticity um, of your learnings. I especially want to speak, uh, thank our speakers. Um, Teresa, um, you're an inspiration um, on diversity, and we just know that, um, you know, the work that you're doing is making a difference to our futures. Um, Anna, uh, Gunter, I absolutely loved your, um, the stats shocking that shared, we have a long way to go, and the numbers tell it all, and um, I guess, you know, we do need to make that difference, especially the few number of female entrepreneurs. Um, if you go into tech, um, often I'm the only female tech entrepreneur at events. So we've got a long way to go, um, but we're making that difference. Um, Joe Pennycook, um, nobody knows India. I would say few ladies know India like Joe. And so thank you for sharing um, all your, your learnings. Um, Dati Arti, Arti Gupta, I think many of us are going to be getting in touch with you. I'm looking forward to coming to India in May. While I was talking on the conference here, somebody, a female entrepreneur friend just said, oh, I'm looking at going to India after China. Who do you know? And I'm like, well, wouldn't you know, actually? Really, and I took a photo of the screen and shared your details. Um, and I said, I'm sure you'll help female entrepreneurs. Um, and I guess that's just how it happens. Um, so really magic. And, and Rachel, 
um, yeah, thank you for your sharing and um, the work that NZTE does makes it um, gives us female entrepreneurs certainly going to India gives us confidence and um, the New Zealand Trade and Enterprise team has absolutely been phenomenal for us um, in going to India and just making us feel confident and safe and really embracing that market. Thank you to our event partners, um, the High Commissioner of India in Wellington and Commissioner Muktes Pardeshi. Um, His Excellency, you really are just, you epitomize collaboration and partnership. Um, you're always so generous with your time. Um, so we really, really appreciate um, you um, sharing today. Um, thank you to the Wellington Chamber of Commerce and to Simon Arkist and Sophie Best. Um, I love what Simon said, um, you know, that actually, if you can see it, you can believe it. And quite often, um, you know, some of my husband particularly says, why do you do so many speaking events? And you're always doing um, all these e events. And, and it really is trying to let our daughters know, actually, it is possible. You can be um, a mother of four like I am. So three of my four children are daughters. Um, and you can have a business and you can do tech and you can do these things. Obviously, it needs a village. Um, um, but, you know, if you can see it, you can believe it. So um, a really great takeout from Simon's comments. Um, INZBC Strategic Partners, thank you so much, HCL Technologies and all our partnership and support. And INZBC Associate Partners, New Zealand Airline Academy, thank you for your support. Um, contribution and guidance as well from participating organisations. So thank you again, New Zealand Trade and Enterprise um, Redesign Group, Maori Women's uh, Development, Adobe Ventures and Fiki Flow Startup Cell. Thank you all. You make these things possible um, and it really means so much. Um, Mahatma Gandhi said, um, be the change you wish to see in the world. And it's up to us to be the change. Uh, India as a nation um, has a record of actually creating global leaders. And many of the world's most phenomenal leaders actually come from India. Microsoft, um, such an Adele is one of my favorites. IBM, Nokia, Adobe, Google, MasterCard, all come from India. Um, and so I think it's up to us to see how do we leverage that leadership, but also so empower the female generation coming through um, through partnership and it's great to see some incredible leaders um, like the Pepsi CEO now being the Salesforce CEO in India and the difference that she's making and really giving us a voice so it's up for us it's up to us to be that voice um, it's up to us to be um, if you can see it then you can believe it and so thank you all of you for sharing so much today and hope everybody enjoyed the event